I'm Tracy from MeetRx, and here we are with another, another success podcast. I'm with uh, Holly and Frank from Hawaii. Hi, Holly and Frank. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's so nice to have you. Thank you for joining us and telling us about your success story. Can you begin by telling me um, what your health conditions were like before carnivore? Okay, I'll go first. Um, basically, my concern was inflammation. Um, I had years of problems with uh, a hip uh, pain and uh, believed I was destined to be uh, going in for surgery for that because it runs my family. Everybody, pretty much my family has had hip surgery, knee surgery, back surgery. And uh, so I, I didn't want to have to go in for surgery. So, um, like I said, I, I had started keto prior, and um, that you know it helped about eighty percent. So I thought, okay, you know, if keto helped that much, maybe carnivore can can do the rest. And I didn't see results until about three months in. I thought, okay, I'm going to do carnivore for that one month. You had your January. Uh, challenge for that one month and I thought okay we'll see how it goes and, okay I'm, I'm feeling pretty good and then I, you know Sean Baker says oh no you got to give it 90 days give it 90 days so I thought okay I'll go for the three months to see what happens and so I was pleasantly surprised at how well it was feeling by three months and my knee pain was was gone um, my sleep was much improved I had a lot of sleep issues prior to um starting keto and carnivore, uh, I noticed with uh, carnivore that um, the sleep was much deeper and you didn't need as much because you were such a deep sleep. And um, I'm also hypo hypothyroid. Uh, I have that postmenopausal. I'm 59 years old. Um, and uh, so I started uh, seeing stories about people curing their their uh, thyroid on um, carnivore and I thought well wouldn't this be great you know I, I was skeptical and um, so that's pretty much what got me started and and uh, my husband started way before I did and so I was a little afraid uh, because I come from the old school where you need a lot of vegetables um, and I have two vegetable gardens I grew my own vegetables and when I was keto I was primarily eating more vegetables than I was meat. And um, it didn't seem to be working because I was gaining weight doing keto. I had initially lost uh, what I needed to lose, but, uh, and that was just a, a side benefit of keto for me. And I thought this is great for a uh, menopausal woman to be losing weight is almost, you know, it's an oxymoron. So um, I thought, wow, this is great. But then it started coming back on again. So, um, I decided, well, okay, you know, I'm seeing all these success stories with weight loss. So, you know, maybe this will, will help. And I was doing, I had, with keto, I had to do a lot of fasting. First, I did the intermittent fasting. And then I ended up having, that you know, wasn't much of a help. But I ended up having to do like three-day fasts. And as much as I liked the benefits from that, it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, and as soon as I stopped the fast, the weight, whatever I lost on the fast would just come right back on. And I, you know, I thought, well, this, this isn't how it's supposed to be. So um, that was the, the beginning of my journey. And I'll let you go ahead and talk about yours. Yeah. I don't, you know, I cannot remember exactly what the reason why was that we started um, keto. You know, I know I think it was her, you know, and, and I said, okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. And, um, and, but yes, it was, you know, the, the pains and we, we started in March 10th of 2018. And I said, okay, in June, I'm going to turn 60. You know, and I wanted to hit 60 looking pretty good, you know, um, it didn't look bad, but it was more of a, uh, you know, can I get myself lean by June? And, um, and yes, I had pain, but I didn't expect anything from it. But, and then like you talked about, you know, going on keto, having such a low amount of protein, um, I started feeling really bad. 
you know, um, physically. Although pains went away, um, it still didn't feel all that great. And so then within a month and a half, I think, a month, a month and a half, I, I switched to carnivore. And, and what a big difference it was for me, you know. I thought that I would end up, you know, having less energy maybe, you know, and, and uh, not feeling as good. But I felt great. And, and, you know, uh, yes, I, inflammation had to have gone down because, you know, a lot of pains that I did have, I didn't have anymore. Um, so I, and, and for me, it's really interesting because, you know, here in Hawaii, rice is a big thing. And I don't think I've gone more than a week in my life not eating rice. And I haven't eaten rice now for two years, you know. Um, and that's... And, and that's something that's very special. And I love my meat. Anyway, you know, I, I, as a kid, I hated eating salads. And, and so this is a godsend. Even with her beautiful garden and all of her vegetables, you know, yes, I ate it. Yes, it tasted good. I wasn't really excited about it. You know, you cook me a steak and I'm excited. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. So... When you implemented the carnivore diet, did what kind of foods did you eat through, you know, starting out? And did you have any difficulties switching from keto to carnivore? I had more of a problem than he did. No, no problem. No. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it's so ingrained to, you have to eat vegetables. And I kept, you know, second guessing myself, oh, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Um, I had done green smoothies for forever. Uh, all the time and it was that was a hard transition um, I found when I first started doing carnivore that I craved avocados and I craved macadamia nuts and I am a out of the closet chocoholic I mean you sweets that was another issue I, I was sweets is is a, is a, something very hard to withdraw from and keto kind of gave me that. I didn't get into the fat bombs and keto and stuff, but I, every once in a while I would, you know, make those keto brownies and keto this and keto that. And I couldn't just have one slice. I'd have to eat it until it was out of the house so I wouldn't have any more to eat until my next binge. So, you know, I had that to deal with. And so the beginning of carnivore, I mean, I swear, I, I had withdrawals from, from not, and I was, it was odd because I crave macadamia nuts, which I never ate before. <laughs> I, nuts are not something I really like very much, but it, that was a very uh, strong craving. And the first uh, week transition from carnivore to keto, from keto to carnivore, excuse me, um, I felt awful. I had a headache, I was fatigued, I had no mo motivation. And both of us are, are athletes, and we've been athletes our whole life. And um, it was hard. I, you know, I'm one, I used to, I, my workout consists of jump roping, and I would try to go out and jump rope, and I couldn't, I just, it was a disconnect between the mind and, and the body, and I just couldn't function for the first week, and then boom, I was fine after that, after I got through that initial withdrawal, and I thought, oh, how can this be? You know, I was keto before, you know, and I had, I thought I was doing the right thing by slowly weaning from vegetables and going more meat-based, go more meat-based so it wouldn't be such a transition. But I still, I still suffered the first week. Um, he had no transition. No, from, no problem. Yeah. It was, it just, was great. Yeah. He just bounced yeah. right into it. But, I, you know, I was never a big meat eater. Give me seafood and I'm a happy camper. But I was never a big meat eater. And I, I just, like I said, came from that school of thought. You need vegetables. And vegetables is the first thing you eat. Fill up on vegetables. And then whatever's left, you can have your meat. And, you know, that's the healthy way to eat. And that's pretty much my, my whole life, you know, was eat that. And then make sure you save room for dessert. That was, <laughs> that was my philosophy. <laughs> I totally understand that. So what are your favorite meats or what foods are your favorites to eat on a carnivore diet? We eat a lot of beef. Beef is our primary, but we also do enjoy uh, pork belly. That is, uh, we love our pork belly. 
I'm the bacon person. I do um, once a week. I have three packages of uh, bacon in my dehydrator, and I I use it as uh, uh, that's my bacon jerky. That's my go-to. I don't snack. We, neither of us snack, but that's what I have for my uh, evening uh, meal. I have two meals a day. Uh, our main meal is lunch. Um, we sit down and have a nice big lunch. But I'm I'm one of those that can't overindulge. I I can't eat a huge meal in one sit- sitting. So I had to go too mad. Um, and so I have my larger meal in the day because I figured by afternoon when I do our workout, um, I'm going to be burning a lot of that off and need that fuel. And then by evening, it's usually um, I make homemade bone broth in my uh, dehydrated jerky and um, maybe put some meat inside of my bone broth with some egg. And um, but he's another story. <laughs> he's the one we, we like to hate. <laughs> Because I have to eat. Because if I don't eat enough, I lose weight, you know. And I want to keep my muscle mass. And um, and so, you know, I eat probably eight eggs a day, you know. And and, and so it's great. It's like I eat my eggs. I have an omelet. And I'm lucky in that I can eat the same thing over and over again for months. And so then I'll have the same omelet. For breakfast, sometimes I'll have it again at night, and you know, twice a day for weeks on end. Um, when I eat a steak, I feel like I, like I can walk through walls. Yeah, um, the hamburger doesn't have the same effect on me. Um, you know, we eat a lot of hamburger um, uh, in different ways. You know, Holly loves to look at different recipes and make different ways, and and so then. Um, you know, we, we have a smoker now. We've gone to smoking briskets and gone to smoking some pork. And, and so, you know, we love having our, our meat in a different way. Put a steak in front of me and I'll, you know, I'll forego everything else. Yeah. yeah and being one that has never really enjoyed uh, beef or, like I said, I was a seafood lover. Now you put a steak in front of me and I find that I'm salivating for it. And I just find that the most bizarre uh, response now to it. But I, I mean, now I'm looking forward to, to my steak and I think, ah, funny how life changes, you know? It's, uh, yeah, I guess it's Pavlov's uh, uh, theory, you know, ring the bell and you, the dog salivates. And so that's, uh, that's what happens now. And we're, we come from the, we, we use spices. Uh, we're not street carnivore. We use spices on our, our food and um, um, we do seafood. We you use limited dairy. We do the heavy whipping cream. Um, we're not big cheese eaters, but um, the sour cream and cream cheese on occasion um, and eggs. We get a lot of eggs every uh, weekend, go to the farmer's market and get our Seven dozen of eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Seven dozen. Wow, <laughs> that sounds like me. That that sounds like me. I love eggs too. Yeah. So well, no well, autoimmune issues. So you know, um, so far <laughs> we've been lucky. Although I don't know if hyperthyroidism is considered autoimmune. Some people say it's the beginning of Hashimoto's or whatever. But um, that has uh, really been something that's been surprising for me because as of January, I'm off of my medication. Yeah. So that was not something I went in to carnivore expecting. Uh, so that was a pleasant surprise. Um, also, uh, another pleasant surprise is that I no longer crave sweets. Um, very, maybe once in a blue moon, I might think of chocolate and think, hmm, you know, but uh, we had a one year, we have a grandson and he had his one year old birthday party. And, and my daughter-in-law is a, a, loves to make cakes and pastries and she's an unbelievable cook when it comes to baking. So we did have a slice of cake for this one year old birthday party. And it really wasn't that, you know, normally I couldn't stop. I would have to just, I, I binge. I had my one piece and I was like, okay, this is yeah fine okay i can stop i can put it away i'm not missing it so 
yeah. which is good for her because so my, you know I love custard pies tarts and and my daughter-in-law knows this and so she made a custard tart at this party specifically for me so I had to eat half of it because she made it for me yeah oh, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> yeah so um as of January, being off the hyperthyroidism uh, medication, um, it, it's uh, I. The only thing I've noticed is I have put on a few pounds, but let me just say that I've also put my scale away. Uh, I I I'm one of those that would punish myself daily, weigh myself daily, and say, "Oh, you haven't reached that number. This is the number you need to be." Blah 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 blah, and then the rest of my day, I would be very unhappy and depressed all day long. Um, when I went on carnivore, I was already to my um, goal weight, uh, 130 pounds, um, between 130 and 133. So when I went on carnivore, I said, hmm, I wonder if I can get down to my college weight, 128. That would just be awesome, you know, something to kind of brag about. Didn't happen. Uh, scale didn't move. But my whole uh, uh, body composition changed. It was, I was very, I still had a pot belly on keto, hence all the vegetables I was eating. I uh, never made the connection. Um, did the carnivore and like I said, by the three month period, I was starting to see noticeable uh, changes in the body. And um, that's when I kind of decided, okay, maybe this scale stuff really isn't what I should be aiming for. So um, the body comp uh, composition changed dramatically, and uh, I didn't care if I didn't lose weight at this point because I looked amazing for a woman who's almost 60, uh, six pack and uh, very lean. I felt wonderful. I was accomplishing things in the gym that um, women half my age can't do. Um, I my aches and pains. I I can't tell you that the last time that my hip's been hurting me. I, I can't even remember that. My knees no longer hurt. Um, I do get some aches and pains because I'm one of those that uh, will push myself uh, in the gym to see how far can you go. I'm very competitive. So, um, you know, I do have some aches and pains, but nothing, nothing like, you know, years and years of abuse that I have put my body through my whole life. So, um, I'm happy to say that for 40 years, he's been trying to get me, that's how long we've been together, uh, to do Olympic lifting. And I couldn't do it because of my injuries and, and uh, just too tired. And it just wasn't something I felt I needed. Well, uh, beginning of January, January, I have started Olympic lifting because that's his, uh, his mistress. And, uh, so I decided to introduce myself to his mistress and uh, we're becoming very good friends and uh, it's no pain whatsoever. So it will be interesting to see where this leads me to. Um, and I couldn't have done it unless I, you know, fixed my body first. So um, I found that very interesting. So the three takeaways I have from carnivore is so happy to put the scale away. I mean, that is an enemy. It, it's nonsense. So happy that I can get off my thyroid medication. And, um, and my biggest one is getting off of sweets, getting off of sugar, uh, no more binging on that. And um, it's just, uh, it just to realize that you don't have to depend on food now. You don't have, food doesn't control you. You control the food. And so, um, that that's my biggest takeaway and, and my just it it's just changed the way I, I think of you know my life now as an aging woman uh, I think God what a godsend this is really a blessing that I can I can live so free after being you know uh, carrying this uh, ball and chain around for so long you know and how society tells you you have to you know, do this and do that. And I don't have to, I can, I can go against the, uh, the grain and be okay. So um, I don't know what your takeaway is. 
you know, the, the, the thing that amazes me is, is like Holly said, you know, we've always been athletes, always, you know, I don't think a week's gone where we haven't worked out since we were in our early 20s. And so um, I've never been so lean with no, I mean, I'm doing the exact same thing <laughs> that I've always done. And um, I, I, some, I shock myself when I look in the mirror just because. He shocks me when I look at him in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost shocking. It's like, where'd that vein come from? Where'd yeah. that, you know, and, and it's just, yeah. And, and when, and the good thing is when people look at me, you know, you know it, it's not like people who lose weight, it's really obvious. So if, if I have clothes on, you know, you don't know, I guess, you know, but I, bet, I guess people can tell. And so they want to know how I've done this and what I've done. And, and so then, you know, the, the, to be able to share the carnival story and then see them make progress is, is the best thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I became a coach. I mean, I have such a excitement about it and I just want to tell everyone and your story is really incredible. I enjoyed hearing it. So you both got really strong then. Stronger, yes. Yeah. And uh, do it with as little pain now as possible. So yeah, and just more energy. I mean, really just more energy. Yeah. I mean, this stay at home uh, lockdown that we have, you know, we have, we have a gym in our garage, a gym. Uh, <laughs> And we have no problem going out there and spending the whole afternoon, you know, having fun and working out together and, and, and him making me do all the Olympic lifting now. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing how, how good we feel all the time. And, you know, by night, we just get right to sleep and we have a good night's sleep and jump out of bed and ready to, you know, go again. It's, it's uh, not what a lot of, aging people can tell you these days, you know? So um, that's been another exciting moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so. you, both, you both look really great. And <laughs> you would tell people that would want to try this, be sure and go at least 30 days or what would you, what would you? Well, I, I mean, 30 days, I think is just enough to get through the adjustment phase. I say give it 90. Uh, I'm with Sean on that one is three months at least because, you know, I didn't st start seeing, you know, real change until then. And, and uh, you know, people still think we're crazy, um, mm -hmm. but they can't, you know, we're result driven, you know, and um, you, you just, I mean, you can't take advice from somebody, you know, if you want to be financially stable, you don't take advice from somebody who's poor. If you want to lose weight, you don't take advice from somebody who's fat. So, you know, people look at us and they, you know, in my adult life, I have never had people come up to me in the grocery store, other women, and say, what is, what kind of workout do you do? You look amazing. You look so fit. And my first response is, it's not exercise i said 80 percent is my diet and 20 percent is my workout and they said what is your diet and i say me and the looks that i get is they think i'm kidding and and so they say oh oh yeah i know a high protein diet i said no it's not just a high protein diet it's me and uh you know some people walk away shaking their head and some people are like oh and then i'll send them you know tell them oh go go on uh, meetrx.com you know there's go go research it go on youtube and start looking at videos on youtube so um you know that's been another exciting thing is being approached in the stores in the grocery stores by other women and asking me what it is i do and um sharing it that way and then my family you know they were kind of like what are you doing i mean they know i'm a little out there anyway but um you know they they're quiet now because <laughs> they can see what we've been able to accomplish on this. And, you know, they just say more power to you. I can't do it, but more power to you. And I say, sure you can, you know, it change in time. You think you can't, but your body adapts to it. And, and 
you know, you can do it if you really want to, you know, get healthy and, and, and feel good. But um, it's, it's amazing to see how many people just shut down it. You know, they don't even want to try. And so, you know, we just try to live by example. The, you know, what I found because, you know, I do coaching as well. And, and when I go to the gym, you know, people notice the difference you know, in, in how I look and I'm the oldest one there. So it's, it, it's, they're like, Hmm, you know, what, you're doing something right, but they're afraid. Oh, but I need my fiber. And I'm like, no, you don't. Okay, well, how problem. am I going to, you know, go? I said, you know, call me at six fifteen in the morning. I'll tell you exactly where I'll be. It's the same <laughs> place I almost always am every single morning. And <laughs> And, and he said, you can't, you can't be more regular than that, you know? And, um, but yeah, and, and no matter what, but I eat my vegetables. No, you don't. You know, I haven't eaten a vegetable yeah, in, in two argument. years. Um, and so all of these arguments they had, and I think that's the benefit of doing it as long as we have and, and, and being as successful as we have um, is that, you know, we're able to knock down those, those um, you know, those objections and and really uh, discredit them you know and so then the people oh okay and so then all it takes is one other person to start doing it and see results like tiffany mm -hmm. so it's like and and so they go wow how, what are you doing you know oh this is what i'm doing <laughs> and so it, it's just a snowball once you get one other person to do it and then a second or third person and so uh, what was really amazing, though, is um, the, the gentleman that he, he uh, works with uh, training, doing Olympic uh, coaching at the gym is a two time um, Olympiad. Uh, he's competed at the Olympia, uh, yeah. Olympics for two times doing Olympic lifting. And he came and approached us and said, hey, I want to feature you on my Instagram and my Facebook account and I, I want you guys to tell me about your carnivore diet. And so he featured us on his, his uh, two uh, uh, social media media pages and, and said, you know, talked about how he's seen a lot of gimmicks and diets and stuff. And, you know, they were just more like fads, but he's been very impressed with what he's seeing us accomplish on the carnivore diet. So he wanted to maybe put a, a little seed in people's minds that this might be something you might want to look into. And sure enough, we've had, uh, you know, people asking, where do I get information? And, and we send them to ERX, we send them to Sean Baker's book, um, to YouTube. Um, and so, you know, kind of getting it out there a little bit, you know, just by leading by example. And uh, finding that it's better if we sit back and wait for people to ask us instead of trying to throw it on them and, hey, this is how you do it and this is what you need to do. So um, that's been our, our best um, approach at this point in time. And I think that's the best approach, basically. And it sounds like it's working great. It sounds like yeah. it's, you guys look amazing. I just... I'm impressed and I'm, I know that this talk will help many, many people. So I thank you for coming on and, and sharing your success story and you guys look amazing. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you for inviting us and what, what you guys are doing on the RX. I mean, it's, it's some good stuff and just getting the word out. I mean, um, the time is now. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you too. See you later. Okay, All right, bye -bye. have a good day. Thank you. Bye -bye. From Maui. <laughs>